So let's learn about electric circuits or currents or nah, it should be circuits. Okay, we'll certainly never be doing anything as complicated as what's pictured um, in here, but it all has to start somewhere. Okay, so you start off with understanding the <coughs> very basics of how circuits are put together, and then maybe someday you'll be able to put together something complicated like a circuit board, or at least under or part of it anyways, and, and understand how it works. We've already looked a little bit about um, movement of charge in terms of, we know, like, let's say if you charge yourself up uh, positively and then you go to touch a doorknob, uh, because you're short of electrons, electrons will jump uh, from the doorknob to you, okay? So the charges are moving. Now, think about with a static charge, this is just an all of a sudden one-time thing, okay, with this normalizing of charges between the two different objects. And happens once and then it's done. With electric circuits, it's different. Okay. So what makes an electric circuit different from like the static charges we've been looking at? And actually, uh, you know, it's quite a bit. I mean, other than the fact that it involves electrons and charges, there's, you know, there's tons of different things different. Okay. So in order to have what's considered electric circuit, you have to have a closed loop, okay? So you have to have a place, like an entire path that makes a circle. That's why it's called a circuit uh, for the charge to move in. If you don't have a closed loop, we call that an open circuit. So in class, we're gonna be referring to a closed circuit versus an open circuit. So a closed circuit is where you have that loop and it can go all the way around. An open circuit is where, you know, like the switch is not completed and so there's no closed loop. So Again, to kind of draw some differences between this and like a static charge or like the charge interaction that we were studying is that overall the whole, like, there's no part of this thing is actually charged. If I was to check every part, like in this wire, in this light bulb, in this switch, in this battery, there's always going to be the same number of protons and electrons in every single place, okay? So the only question is, is which way are they, how are they being pushed? Because the electrons are being pushed on. So there's constantly, at one side of the battery, charges are being pushed out, okay? So I can't tell, like, which side of the battery this is. Um, I think this looks like this might be the negative side, and this is the positive side. And so at this side of the battery, electrons are being pushed out. And on this side of the battery, electrons are being pulled in. But for every electron that's being pulled in on one side, electrons are being pushed out at the other side. And again, electrons, charges are not building up in the light bulb. They're simply moving through the light bulb. And that act of moving through the light bulb causes the light bulb filament to get hot. And when it gets hot, it gives out heat. So the, there becomes less... Um, that impedance of motion of the electrons, what it, that does is they, um, it takes energy out of the electrons, okay? However, they're still going to move at like the same speed on either side of this electron, or uh, this light bulb, it's the same speed of electrons on both sides of that light bulb, okay? There's no difference... Um, on either side. Some different terms that we need to understand uh, in with dealing with electric circuits are here. So let's talk about what each one of these means and how are they related to each other. So the first one term is potential difference, uh, otherwise known as voltage. And potential difference also comes up in static um, charges. Okay, that. You know, if I have a sphere, like the Van de Graaff generator, and it has all these charges on it, it's going to have a certain amount of, like, push because they're, like, repelled from each other, and they're going to want to try to get off. And that push on those charges is different than, you know, something else that doesn't have all those extra electrons. And so the difference in push between them um, is what causes that potential difference. And oftentimes you refer that to voltage. So we can think of potential difference as being 
um, how much push there is on the charge and circuit. And this is when we're measuring volts, this is what we're measuring. So volts is how much um, push there is. Okay. The amount of current inside um, a circuit has to do with how much charge passes by a point every second. It's not equal to how fast the charge themselves are moving. The charges in the wire actually do not move that fast, okay? But it kind of sends a, like, when you first hook up a circuit, a wave is sent through that, okay? The electrons themselves do not move super fast from one side of the circuit to the other, but a wave um, moves through and pushes on the electrons as it goes and gets them all to kind of, in a way, start moving all at once. Okay, and that wave goes on, on the speed of light through there. Okay, so the wave, you know, you can kind of think of the electrons being induced to move by that wave. And the electrons themselves, again, do not move very fast at all. Okay, so if you were to track any one electron, it's going to move fast. But when you have high currents, you have lots of electrons moving um, all in the same direction. Okay, so resistance... Is how hard it is for the charges to move, okay? Um, and that's measured in ohms. Sorry, current's measured in amps. So to relate these three together, we have Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is equal to voltage divided by um, current. Okay, so that's what an oh, that's how resistance is defined. So we'll probably be solving some problems where we're like given the voltage and the current, solving for resistance, or giving resistance and current and solving for the voltage. And again, if you're not so great at algebra, I encourage you to use the magic triangle here. Remember, you cover up, let's say if I'm going to get something covered up with, like a box, okay? So if I'm trying to find voltage, if I cover up V on the triangle, it tells me to take current times resistance. If I have, if I'm trying to find current, current it tells me to take voltage divided by resistance. And if I'm trying to find resistance, I get Ohm's law, which is voltage divided by current. A lot of times to understand how um, circuits work, we oftentimes use a water analogy. So we think of charges flowing through um, the circuit just like water flowing through some pipes. So if we think of like a, a swimming pool where the water is continuously being brought around in a circuit. So the pump pushes it out, pump brings it back in the other side. Okay, so again, that's similar to how electric charges work where you have to have this closed loop. You can't just be bringing in new water all the time. The water's gotta come back around, okay? Uh, also, we can think of another kind of analogy, like as soon as I turn on the pump, water's moving, I don't have to wait for water to get all the way from the pump to like the pool. The water in the pool will start moving as soon as the pump's on, assuming there's no like airlock um, in there, okay? And again, the reason for that is because a pressure wave is sent out by the pump and then that pushes on the water and causes it to move uh, through the pipes. We can think of, um, the tap on there, and again, these are, this is like a circuit diagram here on the right. So the tap is like a switch, okay? Uh, the pump is like the battery in our circuit, so it provides the push, all right? How fast the water is flowing is just like our current. And then like a pool filter, okay? So if the water has to move through a pool filter, that's going to make it harder for the water to move, so it's going to make the water move slower than if the pool filter wasn't there. And so that's like our resistor, or like, let's say, like a light bulb in this example. Okay, uh, and then if we measure how fast the water's flowing, that's just like an ammeter that measures our current. If we measure the pressure difference across the pool filter, that's just like a voltmeter to measure the volts. Okay, and again, what happens is that the current doesn't change from one side of the pool filter to the other because water doesn't build up in the pool filter. And so we have the same flow rate on either side. What will change because the pool filter is there 
is there will be a pressure difference. Okay, so the pressure on the upstream side will be higher than the pressure on the downstream side. Okay, and it's the same thing with an electric circuit. Okay, the potential here on this side, okay, on the upstream side is going to be much higher than the potential there. So if this is two one and a half volt batteries, okay, if there's a three volt potential difference, so I'm going to call this has a pressure of zero and this has a pressure of three, again, there will be a pressure of three here and a pressure of zero there, okay? Um, and in reality, the pressure here has to be a little bit higher than zero because there still has to be a push to get these back through the ammeter, but ammeters and wires have really low resistance, and so we think of them as not needing a push to make the water flow. Just like if I have a normal pipe, I'm making water flow through it, it doesn't take much pressure to get water to flow through a pipe. Although if you have a very long pipe, let's say going down a very like gradual hill, and I put water in it, the water might not flow through that pipe. There might be too much friction on the pipe to get it to, to flow through like that entire distance. And so that can build up. But that would have to be an extremely long pipe because again, it doesn't take that much. There's two different types of circuits. There are series circuits and parallel circuits. So in a series circuit, uh, which is the ones we've been talking to so far, there's only one path, okay, which is what defines a series circuit for this, the energy to take, okay, and so, or for the charge to take. So all the current through one bulb has to go through the other bulb, all right? What happens is that each bulb then drops the pressure. So let's say if this is 1.5 volts for this battery, that's a common battery um, potential. Uh, if you look at, since there are two bulbs, here the potential difference is going to drop half of that, assuming they're identical bulbs, so 0.75 volts. And then this will drop another 0.75 volts. Okay. Now if I have, like let's say, um, 100 milliamps, of current here, I'm also going to have 100 milliamps of current there. The currents are going to be the same, the voltage difference is going to drop through one through the other. If the light bulbs are different, if they're different types of bulbs, the voltage drop could be bigger across one bulb than the other, but the voltage drop, the pressure difference has to add up to the pressure difference of the battery. Okay. If I look at this parallel circuit then, what happens is that, again, I still have my, so here parallel circuits have multiple paths, okay? So for multiple path circuits, if I have 1.5 volts across this um, battery here, okay, because there's just wires here, I will have, and they don't really take up any of the pressure difference, both of these light bulbs will have the battery voltage across them. So both of them will be 1.5 volts. Okay? Because they both have 1.5 volts again across them, then the current is going to be higher. Because remember, current and voltage and, and resistance are all equal to each other. So if I look at what the current is, whereas before I had 100 milliamps, because that had to go, you know, with a 0.75 volt. Now, because I have twice the voltage across each light bulb, I'm going to have the twice the current through each light bulb. So I'm going to have 200 milliamps through this light bulb. I'm going to also have to have 200 milliamps through this light bulb. And now, because they have multiple paths, so the paths come in. All right, you can think of it splitting and going two different ways. Okay, so some goes through the light bulb and some goes here onto the other light bulb. The currents now are additive. So if there's 200 milliamps through each light bulb, their total has to be 400 milliamps through each, through the entire, um, through the entire circuit, through the battery. There has to be a lot more. And so parallel circuits always demand more, cur like the current's always going to be faster, and sometimes that's counterintuitive. So in series, the more resistors, the more light bulbs I add in series with each other, um, the total resistance goes up, and so the current will go down. 
So in, in this case, more bulbs, current goes down. And that seems intuitive, okay? But in parallel, more bulbs, the current goes up. And that seems weird, like that they'd be different. But if you think about, let's say if I have like a stadium full of people, okay? And to evacuate that stadium, let's say if something happened, if I just have that, people have to go through one door, and then they have to go through another door, and then they have to go through another door. The more doors I add, the longer it takes for people to get out of that stadium. That's if they're in series, if they have to go through one door first, and then the next door next, and everything else. If I'm clearing out that stadium, and instead of adding doors in series, I add them in parallel, so not everybody has to go through the same door, so that, you know, every time I add more doors, then people can just divide up against amongst the doors. And then the more doors I add, the faster the stadium is going to enter. Okay, or gonna, it was going to clear out rather. So that's why the more things you put in parallel, the higher the current gets, because there's so many paths um, for it to take. Power is the rate energy is converted. And that's measured in watts. So you probably see like you have a 100 watt bulb or whatever. Power is equal to the voltage times the current. So this is a formula we'll probably be using on some worksheets to look at if I have this much voltage and this much current through something, um, how much power is it being used? Energy then is power times time. When you're being charged, so if you've ever seen like your parents' electricity bill, and it, what you're being charged for is how many kilowatt hours of energy uh, you've not consumed because energy is not created or destroyed, but how much energy that you've taken from the power company and converted into a form that you wanted to use, whether it be re-energizing the batteries in your iPod or, um, you know, running the lights in your home or, or whatever, you know, those energy transfers that happen inside your home is what you're being charged for. And how many kilowatts of energy did you transfer from one form to another? Okay. So because energy is power times time, Normally, for power times time, we take power, which is in watts, and we multiply by time in seconds. And when you do that, when you multiply a watt by a second, you get the traditional scientific unit of energy, the joule. The joule is a really small term of energy, and if you saw how many joules you were using in a month, you'd probably, like, your head would explode. It's a very small unit of energy is a joule. And so what the power company does is they take how many kilowatts you use. And so kilowatts then is a, is a thousand times bigger than a watt, okay? And then they just multiply it by how many hours. So if I have, um, for example, a 100 watt light bulb, and I'm running that all day long, it's not 25 hours. Yes, nowadays or 25 hours, you got to get more stuff done. 24 hours... Um, for the day, so if I take that light bulb and I leave it on all day long, okay, so 100 watts is the same thing as 0.1 kilowatt times 24 hours, okay, so that would be 2.4 kilowatt hours, okay, and so 2.4 kilowatt hours, you know, again, now the power company, I, I guess I haven't even looked what the current rate is, let's say it's 10 cents for kilowatt hour, so then that costs you like a couple pennies to leave that light bulb on all day long, okay? So it's really not the light bulbs in your home. Obviously, you want to leave lights off and conserve as much energy as possible. Light bulbs are probably a very small part of your overall energy usage. Things like your refrigerator um, with using its compressor and everything is going to be a big energy hog, okay? But again, conserve power, conserve energy. There's certainly no reason to have a light bulb on that you don't need, okay? Uh, circuit diagram, so we're going to be diagramming circuits in here. Rather than drawing pictures of what circuits look like all the time, circuit diagrams are a convenient way of doing this. And so here's some symbols. The ones on the left are ones that we'll probably actually need. Okay, uh, we saw, I think one of the diagrams earlier did this for a light bulb, which is okay as long as everybody understands what we're doing. Um, Another way we can think of a light bulb is a light bulb is just a resistor. So sometimes we'll just see resistors. I suppose if we wanted to, we could say, well, here's a resistor. But to make a light bulb, we'd say, hey, look, there's some light coming off of it. 
Just like if here's a diode, and so in circuit diagrams, okay, we talk about a light emitting diode, and we'll be using those in class. A lot more fun than just diodes because they make light. And they do this crazy arrow and say, hey, there's light coming off the diode. Okay? So again, we'll be um, just wanting you to have these symbols available to you so if you're drawing them, you can know what they are. And so we will be using diodes for sure, um, resistors for sure, okay, DC power um, sources. One that's not on here is that we'll be needing is a switch. So this is what a switch looks like. Okay, I'm um, in a diagram. And if it's closed, if you want to specifically say it's a closed switch, then you go like this and say, hey, you got a switch, but it's closed. All right, so that's uh, kind of all there is for electric circuits, and hope you enjoyed.